Alright everyone, welcome to a StarCraft commentary. Uh, I'm Beater. I know I usually do TF2 stuff, but uh, I love StarCraft and there was this really nice league going on called Pan American Team League. It's organized by Psionic Reaver, like a real OG in the StarCraft scene. And he was doing uh, this league uh, basically to help uh, America get a proper scene going. So he threw in some, some prize money, uh, I think it's 200 uh, Seventy-five dollars for the winning team, so there's uh, some nice little incentive there to go on, and uh, then you can join as a team, and you play basically uh, like in the old style of the the Korean team leagues uh, every week, and you'll get a random op opponent, and then you you duke it out, and the winners will will take some some nice prize money. Actually, the f the prize pool is two hundred seventy-five. The first prize will be one hundred fifty, second seventy-five, and third. $50. So that's a nice little tournament. And it's just there to help grow the American scene. And, you know, as a European, I'm always intrigued to see what they're up to over there. Because they're usually trash. So uh, I'll be making fun of them as much as I can. But, uh, yeah, this is a really nice league. And I love StarCraft. And I wanted to get into casting it. So without further ado, I, I think we should uh, get on with it. And we have today EMG versus X17. X17 is a really old school clan. I definitely recognize it. Um, like you would just go on, uh, I think it's west and you just go into <laughs> X17, it might even have been east, I can't remember, I used to just go on to like the old, like whenever I, I was bored of the the EU server, I would just jump onto US East and West and just join random teams, and X17 was definitely one of them, uh, <laughs> it's been there forever, X17 is just uh, an absolute legend of a channel uh, on Battle.net, so I'm definitely looking forward to see what kind of players they have these days. Um, I know that X17 lost their first matchup, and I know EMG won theirs. And, uh, I, X17 lost against uh, SCC A team, like the StarCraft Constitution. Uh, I think that's a pretty good team, so you know maybe they, maybe you shouldn't uh, knock them too much for losing that. And then EMG beat SOS, and I think I recall that being a complete blowout with SOS being. Uh, like it was just way below EMG. So even though EMG is like the team coming in here with a win, I kind of have a feeling that X17 might be the favorites. But I, I'm not sure. I don't really know any of these players. I might recognize a few people here and there. But yeah, I'm really not too sure. But yeah, enough talking. Let's get into it. The first matchup is going to be uh, Vulture versus VG Raya. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. It's a TVC on, on Circuit Breakers, so, so let's go. Ah, oh, the old StarCraft music. Alright, it, it, all, it is all as it's supposed to be. And uh, this is Circuit Breakers. One of those really standard maps. You have a natural, and then you can just move out here into... Like you have an, a mineral only down here, and then you can move down. At the bottom there's a, like a, a base, in the middle there's a base, and that's that's the map. <laughs> this is the like, this big thing inside the, in the middle, and that's it. It's one of the most standard maps around, and we have a TVC. And usually in TVC, it's just all about you know getting your natural early on, making sure that's safe, and then you want to get your third at some point while putting on like just staving off the Terran aggression. But uh, we'll see. So a lot of different ways. The, the way that most people play these days is to go some sort of barracks into expansion, down at their natural. Uh, but we'll see. We get uh, a nice little supply depot first. That's going to curve, help curve these SCVs. They have a tendency to like go around this way, where it's like really <laughs> they arc out. But uh, if you put your depot here, your SCVs will spawn a little bit closer to the mineral line, and also it will curve the SCVs better, I think. So. Just uh, some nice little uh, positioning here, and also this is not going to be a wall then. That's usually a, a big tell if they want to go for any kind of mech, but uh, yeah, just good build so far. Nice spam, and oh my god, look at this. We have a, an early pool, and he's not going for speed. A uh, pretty like, standard build, not in TVC, but in general, is to go 9 pool speed. And that's not quite what we're seeing here. This is just actually like a pool early pool. And I don't know if it's just because he's been bunker rust a whole lot, and VG Raya just doesn't want to deal with it. And uh, yeah, this is all timed out very well. So he's actually just going to make six links and go aggressive here. 
And uh, this could just also be a response to everyone going for an early expanse these days. Uh, we see no second barracks so far, we see no gas. This is a pretty good sign that we're about to see uh, a uh, uh, fast expansion coming up. And uh, this drone could have seen the SCV, but uh, yeah, he didn't quite infer that uh, that's not where he was from. But uh, let's see, yeah, he should know. He should know, because his overload is down here, his drone is up here, so he should know that uh, the Terran is down here. And here is the, the expansion coming up very early on. And this could be very dangerous for an Artarian player. Still has some Marine up here. He needs to rally him down. He needs to make a bunker. If he doesn't block this with SCVs, he could just be dead. Like, uh, these circles, they're very dangerous. And they're about to come in. And there is an expansion going up behind this. So this is not an all-in and all. But this could do a lot of damage. Here comes uh, the bunker, but it's just way too late. And this uh, this means going to have to run it. He's going to have to pull all his SCVs. He has pulled the SCVs, but... Yeah, those two SCVs go down very quickly, and he's actually just going to focus on this instead of running off the ramp. This could actually be a mistake. And, yeah, this feels like a bit of a cop-out to actually just focus on the building, but there we go. Finally, he focuses on some SCVs, but, yeah, this did quite a lot of damage. But I think if he ran off the ramp and actually went for the uh, Marines, he could have done some more. But, yeah, yeah the Terran didn't panic, he just pulled a bunch of SCVs, and uh, he managed to fight it off. <laughs> this is uh, a... Commencer actually took quite a bit of damage, and it's actually just going to be a completely normal three hatch build as well. So it was just uh, a bit of a, an early Arasi build. Like he didn't go all in at all. He, he didn't make a single ling other than those first six ones. So yeah, no no panic here. Early gas as well, so that seems like it's going to be into a plus one uh, weapons upgrade, which is pretty normal. Normally in these uh, games, you see Terran go for quick plus one weapons and then into five racks. And putting on a ton of pressure. Now, the fact that everything got delayed a little bit could throw off the timing here, but uh, we will see. Still, these just two links just keeping tabs here. Hey, they spot this. It's actually really nice because that's gonna keep Terran in the dark quite a bit. He's only on 10 HP, so that should be pretty easy to to take down. There's still only one barracks, uh, I think. Yeah, probably an engineering bay coming up here. Indeed, there is. So it's just a, a plus one build. The circ just going up for a quick layer. Well, I say quick layer, but uh, just a three hatch layer. And here comes this <laughs> SCV. I, I'm kind of surprised he didn't send it back. It was on 10 HP. Like this needs one hit and it's dead. But can he actually get in there? That would be so clutch. This uh, just drone can kill it. Oh, oh my God! He actually just spots everything. It's, uh, it's a little hit here SCV if I ever saw any. He was so weak, but uh, he, he gets in there, sees the third hatch, sees the lair, sees no hydrogen. Hydrogen would have been built at this point if he wanted to go for quick lurkers. So now he pretty much knows it's going to be three hatch meter. So very nice. Oh, wait, I'm blind. He did see it. And it's still only one barrack, but he's going to move out anyway. He didn't see any circling really. Could actually be really dangerous if Terran decided to push out. Yeah, he has quite a lot of marines in the Zerg. Doesn't have too many circlings here. He does have speed though, so that could be very dangerous. And it is actually going to be a lurker build. It, uh, can be kind of dangerous because if you don't uh, get a uh, get out really far in the map with these lurkers, then Terran can just completely deny your third and kind of contain you. And at some point, the uh, marines are just really strong against this. And it is a plus one attack. And the academy is just finished, and now he's going to start adding on all of these barracks. I predict up to five. That would be the complete standard way to play. Uh, we'll see. So, the lurker aspect is about halfway done, so I think at this point is where you need to go for hydrolisks. And oftentimes you'll see people send out some early hydrolisks, like down here or something, or up here, just to try and flank and morph them outside of the, the Terran view, and then they can send them behind the Terran army. But also the Terran, he needs to move out pretty soon if he wants to deny these. Here comes the third. X, will we see a fifth? We will indeed. This is very standard. It's actually a very aggressive move here by the Zerg. It moves in and kind of trades pretty well, to be honest. Uh, like, he was never going to kill him ever there. But I, feel, I think he was just poking in there to see what was going on. And this is pretty interesting. This is a third hatchery. And normally what we see is that Zerg takes a third hatchery, like, really far away. Like uh, in one of these two corners, 
but uh, I guess because he went lurker, he actually just decided to create it up here really close because then he can just run his lurkers up and defend it immediately. Um, yeah, I, I quite like that. It is also a pretty fast third as, as well. And uh, here comes the, the Terran. There's a lot of medics, and he's not really moving out too often. If, uh, the Terran doesn't move out enough here. Like, he'll just get boxed in by lurkers. They can be very dangerous. And there we go. First two lurkers have been morphed. Then we'll actually just build a bunker here. I wonder if he's uh, planning to expand down here. Could be. But yeah, at this point. Okay, he finally moves up, but look at that. It's not very many marines. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like almost as many medics as marines. Uh, it's like a 2 to 1 ratio. It's not quite enough. And well, look at this. This is actually like a fourth he's setting up to. Is this like a considered a, a secret base or a hidden one? Or is he just gonna. Like expand really aggressively and say to the Terran, "Come at me! Come at me! Just get in here." And he is uh, upgrading a, a range upgrade, which is uh, pretty interesting. Normally we see melee and and carapace, not not the range. So that means he's going to go pretty heavily into lurkers and, and hydras, I think. And just uh, two lurkers. If he just runs over here, and you can actually flank this pretty well. I don't think these are, these are stacked in any way. Yeah, he's kind of run back. And this might just not be enough. Yeah, look at this. Terran's just taking it down, and all of a sudden, there's just nothing left here. It's time to panic for the Zerg. There we go. He's going to run his uh, drones back, but he's going to send in a few lurkers here to try and help out. But uh, nice, nice pick off there by the Terran once again. Walter just doing so much work here on this natural. And this could uh, just completely be game. Like, a uh, He's desperately trying to make circlings. He's going to run down a few here, but I think his casual is going down no matter what. And it's really unfortunate that he had so much faith in his uh, workers. They didn't just have any, any circlings with them or anything else. It's even going to be another contingency up. Let's see where he goes with that. Did he scan this? I don't think he did. Maybe he scanned uh, this base. Oh, but finally... Like, uh, I think... So might have been able to bust out here, but the really nice positioning from the Terran, just a medic wall, really well done there by Vulture, just uh, bringing so much pain, he might even take out this uh, Overlord, and yeah, there's Lurkers on this ramp, so I don't think he's going to be able to actually get up there, and uh, these Lurkers are about to spawn as well, and running down these Lurkers two at a time is so dangerous against the Terran. And finally, kind of fight him on. Yeah, this one's going down as well. There is still this space, but looking very dire for this. The Sergeant, the, the macro is on point as well in the base on Terran. Yeah. Is he still upgrading? He is indeed. He's getting armor. Now we've seen a lot of uh, mech transitions uh, before, but you know when you're this far ahead, you might just wanna. Just uh, get like, a bunch of tanks, get a few uh, vessels, and then just kill the so, Like If you just kill this base, you've won as the Terran. And there's no Hive either as well from the Zerg. He's actually just going to expand again. So the Zerg is definitely very committed to just uh, letting the Terran be aggressive into him, and not the other way around. He's not putting any pressure on the Terran, he's just waiting him out. And uh, this guy seems to look as placed in the very spot. And they're plus two. Like, they have to plus two attack right now, so they're just gonna chew through these marines really well. Like, even if they had armor, which they'll have pretty soon. They can really the situation. Seizing got some tanks over this bridge. Gonna force the lurkers to move back. Gonna allow the marines to cross. Really smooth attack so far from Vulture. This could just be the game ending attack. We'll see if he plays this right. But lurkers, they are. Very dangerous creatures. Yeah, uh, Lurker in from behind as well. And uh, gets taken down, however. Two more. Can he deal with them? Oh my god, those uh, Lurker Spines did so much damage. But man, these tanks are just doing work. Lurkers, they're gonna have to retreat. There's still nothing mining down here in space. There's even some reinforcements coming up. And the barracks are all lighting up. It's really good. <laughs> it's actually expanding here. He had a contingency anyway. But I don't think uh, he actually knows about this base. 
say, I wonder. Oh, you have no idea. I don't know how to, like, do the vision thing. I tried to find uh, the hotkeys for, like, changing the zoom to back to standard. I'm really afraid of zooming out because then I just can't find the, the normal setting again, you know? And uh, I also can't find, like, uh, doing vision and things like that. So <laughs> I, I guess you can do it, but I don't know how to do it. And they're going to base. Going down once again. So it's on one base. And uh, currently, I think Vulture's going to be very confused. Like, what's going on here? He's probably thinking, like, like why is this guy not leaving, right? Uh, he's just going to lift off now, do a full mech transition. He's actually lifting off very early. He doesn't have a whole lot of uh, factories going on. Yeah, this is extremely solid from Vulture. I'm very impressed. Just uh, playing it safe, completely standard, just uh, following the, the Korean uh, archetype model, just uh, doing their meta. Just going to slowly push this main, I guess. Like, just the fact that he doesn't know about this, because this is so unusual for Cirque to take, is uh, definitely going <laughs> to be a small complication. But I, I think he's going to be fine. Also, when these factories come out, right, like, the vultures are going to be so deadly because they has full map control. Here's Cirque peeking in here. This could be a, a tell from uh, Vulture that there, there might be another base out there that he doesn't know about, because where did those Cirque come from? Like, surely this main is just completely blocked, then where did those come from? I can see a queen's nest there. Right, so, how does Cirk win this? <laughs> he needs the filers, links, I guess. Yeah, it's gonna be so difficult. Just pushing up. I'm actually surprised that the Jiraiya just hasn't collapsed yet. Also, I'm sorry, you're right, I'm butchering your name. Here he goes. And uh, Vulture's coming in. These Vultures, they're so powerful because they're so well upgraded. That's the one thing going in search favor. So well upgraded. Coming in with a nice flank as well. This uh, army is actually going to get taken down, I think. Uh, good focus fire. So it's a 1 1. But uh, finally, this base, this uh, task force has been dealt with. Single Marine is going to be the sole survivor, but that's going to be it. And immediately, the Zerg takes this space. Oh, uh, so now it's just a matter of the... I think the turn he needs to get back out into the middle of the map. Uh, this mech transition was not very smooth. Kind of slowed down a whole lot of momentum. But uh, he does already have uh, three bases he's mining from. Uh, four, actually. He's not mining that much from his main. <laughs> he has a lot of minerals left there. Oh, uh, he just needs to get out on the map, place a bunch of mines, and then that should be super GG for the Zerg. But we'll see. How could he ever come back, right? He needs to, like, go down here, take down this base, or drop this main, or just overpower it, but the double bunker is really strong. A triple bunker in the turret. Alright, that's super nasty. And finally, he's gonna he's gonna spot this, this base up here. And I think he's gonna be quite surprised and uh, disappointed himself that he didn't think about that when he sees it. Oh no. Oh no! your minds. Uh, that's just nasty. Okay, Terran uh, should probably also be thinking about expanding, like, probably here. And then, then down here. Basically just split the map in two. And, uh, I feel like he underestimated the circuit at this point. He's like, ah, I won already. And, you know, he might be right. <laughs> He's gonna move up here. I cut off a few circles, but uh, I, I think the circuit also just ex expected uh, Vulture to have expanded here already, but uh, not quite yet. And, uh, finally, we see some more aggression here coming out. He wants to take down his base, and he actually got the, an overload to spawn some mines. Oh, definitely being distracting right now. You can definitely tell. But, uh, the base is going to be just fine, I believe. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Get up and leave. Or you're not. And die. So, so far, this has been quite the blowout so far. Um, it's just like, like if Terran can just get up uh, on this ridge right here and just siege up and take down this base and then down here, that should be the game. Win. Right, but uh, I've been saying that for a long time. Like, yeah. Here we go, another in another battle. 
10 wins it pretty handily, but uh, these, these Hydras, they're actually pretty scary because they're 2 2 upgraded. They're better upgraded than uh, the Terran, the Marines, and uh, this mech is not upgraded at all either. Upgrades on mech is really important. But the uh, nice defensive matrix there is going to help take things down. Nope, just need to move the best moment to get vision. There we go. And uh, yeah, Jiraiya just uh, immediately gets out of there with all his drones. So he saves all his drones, just sends them down here. So he's actually pretty well uh, spread out with his drones. He has a really nice saturation on the bases, but it's still looking dire at all hell. Uh, do we have some upgrades going? Yeah, we do. <laughs> no, he was a little late with the upgrades. No biggie. <laughs> Gets actually completely bolted as he tries to move down here. Move some bolters. But uh, if he just moves his tanks up. And actually, yeah, Muta Switch. That's a, that's a nice try for sure. But, uh, unfortunately, there's still a, a bunch of Marines left. It's gonna complicate things. We can just get the. Oh no, the Defiler going down as well. He actually finally did tech up to Defiler. He's lost one. He takes down quite a few tanks. But uh, this base is just not well in this world, I don't think. It's just slowly going down. It's only one tank in range. But... Alright, here we go. Just need to get those muters and uh, that should be it. Again, these hydras, they're doing a lot of work because they're so well upgraded. Look at that. He actually takes it down. So this game will go on, I guess. Just, uh, I thought this game was going to be over for like... Ages, but uh, the Terran, I think he just uh, kind of went out for a smoke after he knew how far ahead he was. And there we go. Gonna send in some vultures here. No sunken still. And this base is just getting completely wrecked. Here comes some circlings. Uh, oh no. Oh, actually, circlings beat mines. They're just so fast. Cracklings. He dealt with that surprisingly well, actually. Uh, all things considered. Uh, that was like a lot of vultures. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> Vulture has uh, slowed down quite a bit. He's just chilling. Just building units. Taking it easy. Almost got his uh, Goliath uh, upgrade, range upgrade. He's expanded down here as well. He actually needs uh, some gas. Geysers. Uh, usually when uh, Terran do goes mech, we see them just mass expand. And I feel like Vulture probably could have gotten away with that. He just figured the game was over. The, this game is just lasting for so long, like way longer than I ever thought. Like this, the fact that this base is still alive is a miracle to me. Uh, yeah, the, the upgrades for Sirk are really great. I, I feel like that's the only thing keeping him in the game, and also couple that with the fact that Vulture kind of skimped out on them. Uh, he just kind of forgot about them, I think. So okay, with a small excursion down here, trying to deny this base, but there's no base. So good job, Sirk. You got him. I don't think he's going to be able to get up here, though. This is actually a surprisingly small army. <laughs> uh, I'd kind of expect him to just have like a ton of bases, a ton of factories, but he doesn't have that many. So he's just going to move slowly across the map here. Try to siege up. Um, I was surprised he's trying to go across here. I think that they're going up here with the thing, and uh, here comes uh, some Dark Swarm. That's going to cause the Terran to run. And very annoying. But if you do see up, you can go kill things in. It's going to take a while. And Splash will eventually get the thing. As you can see. There we go. Yeah, so you think they, they miss, but you know they don't miss by enough that uh, they don't hit them with Splash. So, you can actually kill lurkers on the swarm as well if you have enough tanks. Because at some point, <laughs> the splash damage will hit it. Hit the lurkers. You need a lot of tanks for that. Oh, here we go. The natural is once again under fire. I think that's gonna be it. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Finally, GPS recalled. Jiraiya taps out. And, yeah, this game, it, it slowed down quite a bit towards the end, but. Yeah, it's uh, it worked out in the end for for Vulture. But a very kind of by the book game by Vulture. He he did a really good job, I think, of uh, just playing it standard and 
he just hit the Zerg really hard and just uh, outplayed those uh, two lurkers. So really well done by him. So moving on to MC versus Kingdom on uh, on Blue Storm. All right, and spawning uh, down in the bottom left will be Kingdom X17. I want to say Kingdom is. Uh, it's a familiar name that I've heard before. Oh wait, sorry, I lied. Yeah. Why is he... This looks so blue. Holy crap. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna... Oh. Yeah, like that. <laughs> this looks so blue. I'm pretty sure I, I disabled the skins. I guess I didn't. Oh yeah. Oh, can I not? That's... Uh, it sucks. Oh well. But yeah, blue. EMG, Kyrie. Wait, what? I thought that was someone else. Is that actually... MC, Kyrie? It's probably the same, right? Makes sense to me. So, PvP on Blue Storm, and this is of course the, the weird map with uh, this tiny, tiny choke, and then for the rest of the game you have to move up here. So, especially in PvP, um, that's gonna mean that, uh, like, uh, you you, look, you want dragoons in, in this matchup, man. I, I have no idea how big the screen was. That actually is super annoying. <laughs> I, I I think this is pretty standard. Might be too big. I don't know. God damn, it's so hard to tell. The very early scout coming out here from Kingdom. Uh, I wonder if he's uh, had some bad experiences with people building in this base. Uh, there's no real good place to. Manor pylon here. Uh, there's here. So I don't quite understand uh, this early scout. I suppose he's just uh, playing it safe, keeping an eye on it. But uh, it's actually a two gate from him. That's uh, that's interesting. And uh, sellouts do fit through this tiny choke. So you can kind of say if you put on a ton of pressure, there's a pretty short rush distance, and if it kind of fails, then a very long route around for the uh, dragoons to punish you. Uh, that's kind of interesting that he chose to go for a two gate. Let's see, he's gonna scout the two gate now and see if he uh, has any kind of response to it. Where is his uh, next? Oh, he, he actually built a salad, so that's gonna help him out quite a bit. And oh my god, there's even a pylon going down here. He, so he could be building an extra gate. Interesting. Interesting. We kind of see Draco do this thing. Where he, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this pylon is so late. Oh, this is painful against a 2 gate. Just building nothing for so long. And there's the third gate as well. So it's just an all-in 3 three gate. And I don't even think he's building probes anymore. He's just only building pylons and sellouts. And this guy could probably go home and mine. Or help things. And uh, there's a nice little block here. It's gonna send the salad around. He doesn't want to fight him, I guess. Uh, once he has two salads, he can just fight them one by one. And then even have the third one help. But yeah, this this Dragoon right here is super late. He's gonna go for two gate uh, Dragoon. Might even be forced to build a shield battery. There we go. There's uh, Pro even getting in the mix. Getting chased down. <coughs> Alright, so this guy is pretty well dealt with, but here come the two others. And this is where it gets really scary for Kyrie. Or MC. I'm just gonna call him Kyrie. <laughs> oh yeah. He's doing a pretty good job actually so far. He's not even pulling throws. He's just dancing around. He's about to kill his first seller. That's really good. But. You know, this pressure is going to be relentless. This is a fourth gate going up as well. Here comes uh, another Dragoon out. Now he has two Dragoons against the world. Uh, but now this guy's going to go for the mineral line while the other just chase Dragoons. This is so scary. The guy here with a four gate cellar rush. Dude continues to dance while these guys just continue to beat up. Mineral line. And actually, a really nice pro block right here. Just, uh, cutting off axes here, so I'm really impressed with the, the Dragoon Micro. Once uh, the range kicks in as well, it could be 
a really nice deal. And uh, the pressure's kind of subsided. I feel like, uh, yeah, he doesn't have enough money to actually build out of four gates. He's only building out of one of them right now, so he might have overdone it with the gates. And uh, the micro is really good, uh, except for the <laughs> attacks his own gateway here. Uh, yeah, this is really solid. At this point, he's, uh, Kingdom has just decided to go for probes. He's actually been uh, been fought off, and uh, at this point, Kairi could actually start pushing out to these gates and, and take off a significant chunk of pressure. Yeah, look at this cell uh, just getting completely owned, doing zero damage, only doing uh, a bit of pulling down here. So what's going to be the next move? He has uh, quite a lot of money sp uh, spent up, saved up here, so he might just go for an expansion. Oh, does he not know? I guess he doesn't. That could be annoying. And cannons. Alright. That's weird. Oh man, I kind of wish he would go forward to, to pressure. <laughs> but this is uh, the most mineral heavy build I have ever seen from the robots in PvP. Uh, very unorthodox. Not sure I would recommend it. Like any kind of reaver drop or just drops in general, you just ferry down uh, units here. Would be very dangerous, even if he just runs in and snipes this pylon. Man, he's just continuing to funnel in things here. Uh, this is looking extremely good for Kai. He's uh, getting his, his expansion up. I guess uh, Kingdom wants to do the same, and now he's spotted these gates. He's gonna go forward. Eh, yeah, just the gates. I, I, I can fight like that. Well, he could just kill the pylon, but... Actually, just uh, allowing him to build more cells out of this gate is actually a good thing, because it's so easy for him to just focus them down. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he finally goes for the pylon. He's like, no, no, no. No more this business. Now he's going to go for the counter-attack. Even uh, adding in a Cellot. Adding uh, a Robo, so very standard. So far it seems like uh, in these games we, we always have one person playing standard and one person playing super unorthodox. And uh, this cell is really nice for blocking you. That's uh, that's why he made that. That's uh, really nicely done. Moves back just enough uh, to block it here. And only one guy can shoot it. We'll pick these off as well. Good solid play. Uh, there is a lot of these cannons here. I, five cannons is probably enough. One Dragoon is roughly equal to one cannon. So, you know, he could potentially break this, but there are two gates behind this as well to, to deal with it. Oh, well, you know, he might just feel so far ahead that he doesn't want to. And also, when he sees this, he might just uh, start faring in troops. Yeah, there we go. He actually has a bit of high ground, but he doesn't have a very good spread. Like, he can't uh, spread out very well and get a good uh, arch going. Oh, no! The green path thing is the thing. You should probably just go back and kill this guy, right? Because this is uh, telling uh, Kingdom that there's no expansion here. Uh, you know, you want to deny info as much as possible. And, uh, once he gets this observer out, Go for the, or actually going for speed as well. It's interesting. <coughs> Kingdom has finally started mining gas and is getting a uh, Dragoon range. No upgrades or anything so far, but it's actually on even basis, uh, incredibly enough. Just uh, the difference right now is that uh, Kyrie has way more Dragoons and uh, has all the map control that's going to allow him to just expand with ease. These two salads heading up here from Kingdom. It's uh, interesting. What's the... how do you follow it, right? I've seen them do that, but... No, I can't... I don't know how they do that. Again, there's probably a button for it, and I don't know it. And I can't find it anywhere. I really, really looked. No, oh, that's, uh, that's a resource that could be out there. That would be nice. A Reaver Drop coming in. Reaver Drop should be very effective. The cannons don't do very well against Reaver, so he could just park it up here. Shoot down, and then if, whenever the dudes walk forward, you're just gonna be fighting the dudes on high ground. Or also, you could just ferry them down over here. Looks like uh, these salads gonna come in here, see if they can get in and pick up some 
probes, but the the stalwart cell is still blocking this choke. Finally, goes down, but uh, he, he did his job really well. This probe found a nook where he has no vision. Good job, probe. Now onto three gates here. So I think this is a uh, crunch time right now for Kingdom. Like, this is where you can die. He is uh, doing a really good job of just uh, buying time for the sellers. Yeah, takes down three to four sellers, or uh, probes there. A good job by him. The third has just been finished now for Kai. And here comes the, the Reaver, and it's a speed shuttle. And come on, dude. Yeah, as always. Only gets one probe, but... Uh, Disrupts it quite a bit. Now he's gonna move into the main. This could be very dangerous. This gets picked off on so many resources. There's even a cannon here. Oh my god, there's so many probes. No. Oh, oh scared from the first. But this is not over yet. That was a nice shot. But finally. It does uh, quite a lot of damage. It's also a lot of head in supply. These Dragoons, are, they're not here, so this is not an all-out assault. I feel like if the Dragoons were over here, you could just uh, park his Reaver up here and start shooting cannons, and that would be really pantriedly scary for Kingdom. But another Reaver drop. This time the probes don't see it, so they don't run in time. There we go. This time around, they are going to run. And uh, this uh, Reaver has actually been quite effective. And do we see extra gates yet? Yeah, we up to four. Uh, at this point, I feel like you just add like five extra gates and just crank out units and kill them. Probes finally coming back. They're, they're feeling safe. And, uh, I wonder if Kai, like, he could expand, he could add gates, he could add more reavers. He's teching. I guess that's uh, his move of choice, also adding some gates now. Oh, another reaver drop. This time around, might die! Yeah! Barely doesn't make it out alive. It did quite a lot of work though. Where is. Uh, so, leg speed. Not quite done yet. I'm surprised at how, how small the army actually is for Kyrie, but uh, it's still significantly larger than Kingdom's army. He has plus one and plus zero, so no upgrades at all. Do we even have a forge? Yeah, we do. So he's working on it. So Kingdom is actually uh, ahead in upgrades. He did build his uh, <coughs> his forge quite a bit earlier, and looks like uh, Kyrie is just completely comfortable just sitting back up on his own high ground. Like he sees everything with his observer. Uh, I wonder if we're gonna see any reavers. Kingdom himself? Probably not. He's just gonna gear up to take his third. That might just be uh, the sign to Kyrie, like uh, to, to go and take his fourth. Just split up the map and then move across. I haven't actually looked at Dragoons down here. I don't know. I never even thought to look down here when I played for some reason. Yeah, again, this observer just sees everything. I don't think uh, any observers have been made out here. No, Kingdom just... Oh, I forgot about it. So one DT would just do so much damage to this army. Yeah, it's gearing up for a fight. Kingdom moving across the map. It's gonna run into this big army. These cells, they're gonna regret their life decisions of moving that far forward. Leave has been dropped as well. And shuttle is not being focused. A lot of oh my god the storm and we that's gonna be back breaking the kingdom yeah this he's even fighting uphill now so just an excellent hold here coming out from Kyrie that's gonna cause everyone else from kingdoms uh, army to run back and at this point now I feel like Kyrie this would be a good time to try and move across the map but uh, again he's just uh, he's hanging out just uh, macroing up I was gonna do a storm drop. Oh, and so many probes! But uh, actually, really nice reaction time coming up from Kingdom. Oh, he's just gonna spawn his Archon down here. Why save them? Just to be a man. 
That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> he could have saved it. There, there was zero pressure on it. Eh, does some damage, but that's it. Alright, Kyrie, I, I think it's time, buddy. Just move across the map. The most annoying part when attacking on this map is that you can't uh, rally your gateways to here. Because then everything will just get stuck in here. So you have to rally them up here and then manually go here. Like usually you have an F key set. Then attack everything across. But there we go, finally! His army's on the move, as I said, that he moved back. God damn it. Alright, but uh, yeah, he's playing it safe. And if he can get up on this high ground, then he can just assault this really well. Especially if he still has some weavers left there. He does not, but even then, just being on the high ground with a superior army, that's going to be completely game-winning. These two goons firing, firing up in a small choke. Not going to be a good time for him. Let's see. I think we're about to see a fight. This is a big army barreling down on this, and the high ground is in Kyrie's favor. There you go. They're moving back. The, the cells and the archons in the front. This is a really nice army composition. Like, really nice depth to it. And the shuttle here. <laughs> Picking up random stuff. Uh, yeah, this expansion is about to go down while the cells and archons are just pushing back these uh, screws. The screws are doing a pretty good job of kiting, but while these uh, cells will die, that's gonna be it. And that is game over. And finally, Kyrie will be able to take it. That was a very weird uh, all-in coming out. <laughs> oh, there was even a, a drop in the main. I missed it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, well then. Yeah, so that makes it one to one. And the Kingdom's uh, strategy did not pay off there. Uh, he just didn't have enough probes to actually produce out of four gateways. So it wasn't nearly as... Uh, as fruitful as you'd think. Um, but he rebounded quite nicely actually, especially considering that he didn't have gas for the longest time. So, <laughs> interesting enough. And now it's going to be a 2v2 on Fighting Spirit. It's good. So, it's going to be Vulture and Target. Those are, that's the right side of the map, that's easy, and then it's gonna be Jiraiya and NGO, or Ngo. I'm just gonna go with NGO, because uh, if any African people watch this, they're gonna be very offended. I don't want that. So it's gonna be Sir Terran on the side of the X-17, and it's gonna be Protoss and Zerg on the side of EMG. EMG, by the way, is uh, an old uh, TF2 clan name as well. Amazing gaming. <laughs> uh, did that come from Boomboy? I doubt it. But yeah, 2v2. I love 2v2. It's uh, probably my favorite uh, game mode, and this is uh, the most standard map in the entire world of Starcraft Brood War. Just, you have the natural, you have a pretty easy third to take, and then you have this big middle, and there's like a base in here that you're not really supposed to take. But it's just kind of there to add texture to the middle. But yeah, Terran versus Terran Zerg versus Protoss Zerg is a very uh, fun matchup in my opinion. It's uh, it's slightly favored for the Protoss Zerg uh, because they have a slightly better early game. Marines take a while to get good, so you know the early game is going to be really hairy here for for Target. If if he can survive and, and then get help from his uh, Terran ally, that's going to be like the way. Uh, X-17 win this. But uh, usually, like, you'll see a bunch of Salads, a bunch of circling, and they're just gonna go for the Zerg, and then uh, the Terran can't help. Uh, the Terran's going for a wall-in, so... We might see a mech opening. This uh, supply depot is super far up. Um, I don't think a single supply depot can actually block this, so... <laughs> if he has messed up his wall, that's a uh, bad news bears for Vulture. See a two-gate. A nine pool speed, completely standard. I think is it an over pool? Doesn't it looks like he has too many? He's made too many drones for it to be a nine pool. Maybe I'm wrong. And I must have also been wrong here. Yeah, the cyber boot does fit. 
<laughs> does block it, so thank god he's better than me. I, I can never tell through these walls. I'm the worst at walls. And it's actually going to be a second barracks. So it's not make No gas to be found. Gonna be a significantly later pool here. And is, is he waiting to build? Yeah. It's like a 12 pool ish. Alright, first circlings are out on the map. Jiraiya is gonna probably beeline for the Zerg. Uh, target, he will be fine from that, but uh, where will these sellouts go? Alright, this is just all about can targets survive? And he's actually going for quick lair as well. That, that's pretty ballsy. Because he's gonna be on a, under a lot of pressure. Here come the, the circlings. The initial circling pressure. He, he should be able to hold that just fine, but. As soon as there's a seller just pushing his way across this ramp where it's really advantageous, uh, it's going to be very top. And, uh, yeah, he's going to build a creep colony. He has a nice little wall off here with the, uh, the spawning pool. It's a really nice way to do it. And he sees it coming, so he knows. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I, I like this cannon because that makes... Uh, cannons are extremely good. Like, often you actually see the pros just make cannons down here, just to completely shut out the town. But, uh, let, let's see what, what this uh, seller does. So far, nothing. I'm kind of surprised. They haven't even forced Target to actually morph this uh, Sunken. There we go, finally the cells push up. And the Sunken is now super late. So this is just so scary, and this is how so many 2-2s two and surges get overwhelmed early on. We're gonna do a nice drone drill here. Sunken has to spawn. The cells come in here. They start focusing down the drone. If they're not drone dying, that's gonna be just good enough for them, I think. Yeah, they're focusing down drones really well here. But the target is definitely gonna survive this. So a pretty nice hold. But how many drones are left? Not very many. Yeah, you can see this so he doesn't care about any fighting units. He wants the drones. Yeah. And uh, this is why I was so surprised to see this early lair, because it's so difficult to actually survive this early pressure. Um, and without just losing all your drones, but uh, you actually see Vulture coming out, and he doesn't have very many Marines. And oh my god, Circus finally wasn't quite enough, so Vulture's, uh, he's gonna survive that, that little, little scare. And if we actually see Target being aggressive, he doesn't even have circling speed, that's, oof. that's not what you want to do, move out on the map. And we actually see the Circus expand, and the Protoss uh, building up cannons. While going for a spire. Really nice team play here. Cannons, as I said, extremely good against Marines. And uh, this spire is going to be very good against this because, like, target he has to make drones at this point. Yeah, these Marines, I, I don't think they're going to be able to break three cannons. Especially with some circling health. Uh, yeah, but the Protoss, what is he teching to? We don't know yet. Okay, so he's just focusing on cannons so far. Building five of them. So at this point, uh, everything has just kind of stabilized, but yeah, we see Vulture moving his marines over to Surg Ally. He knows that there's gonna about to be a bunch of Mutas in that base. And meanwhile, just still producing. I think we're going to have to see some Scourge coming up. Gonna be uh, Citadel of a Dune. We we might see a Dark Templars. Dark Templars are really good against Marines, <coughs> and it is three racks. So yeah, more cannons should be enough at this point. NGO. Yeah, Mutilus is going for the Overlord. It's just a uh, staple. This is, at this point, this is where um, uh, the Terran can uh, kind of rebound back. Because uh, these big Terran uh, bio armies are very scary in the mid game. It's kind of uh, unfortunate that the, there's cannons everywhere, but you know, this expansion is just kind of off limit. Unless it gets cannoned. Oh, and here comes the Scourges. Can he clone them? Oh, you just run away. 
You know, you, you can kill them with the Chinese triangle, and it uh, looks like he's just gonna give up here. And Dark Templars are indeed uh, what we see. Yeah, these Marines, they're, they're still forced to be up here, so this army is uh, way smaller, but you know, if these Marines were not here, the target would be dead. More cannons coming up. This is very tech heavy from the Protoss. Usually it's uh, the Protoss that's uh, that's the big one with the Zerg supporting, but uh, this game is kind of the opposite. And it's still just uh, pure Mutas. And Mutas are not that good against Bio. Turrets going up, plus one being researched. So what is a long-term plan? There we go. This is uh, exactly what the, the Terran needs to just block. But uh, it could be very difficult with these uh, Dark Templars. If the Protoss can successfully get that base up, it's going to be so good for them. Oh, this, uh, this is a hero medic right here because that caused them to spot this. Uh, this is so annoying for Terran. He only has limited scans. Yeah, he doesn't have enough energy right now. You're just going in trying to, to see if they can uh, spot a hole in the Zerg's uh, def defense, but both Mutas, Skirts, and Marines were there, so no luck so far. Only one gas still. I'm kind of surprised that uh, Jiraiya has not produced more drones, because he was completely safe to, due to cannons. And Terran just uh, taking up, <coughs> up to science vessels. To deal with the Templars, both EMP and the uh, Dark Templars. But that was pretty well by a science vessel, but eventually, like Protoss tech, both Reavers and High Templars just demolish and eat MM for, for breakfast. Which is a nice, sturdy breakfast. I, I recommend it. Is Terran trying to switch off of him uh, uh, into mech, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, the Protoss, uh, he's playing it kind of very passive, but it, it works out. It's gonna allow Target to, to expand. He's finally, he's caught up on drones. Pretty much, at least. He actually he almost has more <laughs> than Jiraiya. Uh, so it's beginning to look up here for X-17, but again, this is so annoying. Just one DT. Gonna take some swipes and then run away. And, you know, you don't want to use up your scan. Yeah, you can see it has zero. Two cannons. Will there be storm, though? He has the energy. Oh, there is. And Dark Templars as well. Complete slaughter. Yeah, the Cirque should have probably been there. Help out. Armor being upgraded and then air attack on the other one. Armor is generally better than air attack, especially against in Muta versus Muta. It's just that uh, air attack is cheaper. Yeah, but it's because uh, they the glade where they bounce. So you know the first one does nine, the second one does like three, and then last one does one. I, I don't I don't remember, but like the last one doesn't do very much damage. But basically, like like uh, minus one on. If when you do three damage, it's uh, really significant because it's like a percentage base. Thing. Yeah, still mutas being made. It looks like oh, he's making four overlords. <laughs> oh, three. All right. Once again, he's going to just peek it. The dance of the mutas. The complicated slightly by the marines. This is a lot of mutalisks. So it's very scary. We have signs of all yet. Uh, yeah, this could uh, be very scary. So here we go. Both teams finally come in. Mutas are just all in here. It uh, looks like uh, Jirai does not like what he sees, and uh, probably good for him. And uh, oh, this dark archon. Like if he can cast Maelstrom. On a clump of mutas, that would be so sick. Uh, I really like uh, how, how techy uh, NGO is playing. He 
He doesn't have very many gates. <laughs> he just has cannons all over his, his, uh, his allies' base. And uh, Terran, he, he's gone off to tanks and, to, and vessels. So, yeah, like, the more heavy the Terran goes on the mech side, the, the better it is, I think. Yeah, look at look at this tiny Protoss army. That's actually super scary because this one Maelstrom, catch all the mutas and then just, just storm them twice. And they're all dead. But it's actually a really scary army. And uh, oh yeah, look at this. The Stark's gonna expand down here. He really needs more drones. All right. Let's see. Pretty interesting, so the Zerg is gonna have a lot of gas, and here we go. This is a pretty scary attack. The Terran is sending down the enforcement, but alright, one storm has been baited out, but I don't know, it did a lot of work. Still. Oh my god, this is so scary. Separate them! Alright, uh, the okay jump. There we go, a maelstrom. Is there any more storms left? There is. Oh my god. So nasty. <laughs> one HP left on that. Terran does get there just in time to save everything. A good job here, but uh, you're just gonna retreat to these cannons and cannons going up is just so annoying to deal with. Uh, Terran does have tanks, but the uh, tanks are slow and you're not happy to move them across the map because you can get backstabbed. And Geo is just becoming more and more dangerous uh, the longer this game goes on because he has the best tech. Oh. All oh, these mutas getting caught at the start of the target. As, uh, that was probably an irradiate trying to be <laughs> cast. And again, this Dark Archon on the prowl. This tank getting picked off could be huge. Uh, two more shots. Nice save here on. Might have been better spent uh, going after the mutalists, but no. Uh, a tank up here on the high ground that's gonna save everything. Oh no, here comes another radiant. He's trying to separate them out, but he's struggling quite a bit to do it. So, who's coming in here, but uh, once again getting uh, held. This is uh, super intense. And here comes some more reinforcements. He's trying to take down these dragoons. They're pretty well upgraded. And he's going to have to retreat. So, uh, target staying alive here, and uh, this base is actually still not being be been taken. Kind of surprised they went so so all in with the the cannons, but yeah, NGO is doing so well. So they're constantly expanding everywhere, teching up, doing cool things. Yeah, he probably needs some more storms, but he is making them. He's got a lot of gate weights at this point and a really good economy. Uh, yeah, Jiraiya still has a pretty pretty shoddy drone count. So that's the one thing holding that team back. Terran expanding up here, Vulture doing his best. He will repel this attack. I think. <laughs> Block him? No. Alright, just been moving back here. This is once again. Like you can see Target, he's so drone starved. Oh my god, this is painful. Run away! Oh my god. Absolutely nasty. Here comes in another really scary Protoss attack. And another storm on just one tank. <laughs> it's gonna be safe. I think this match is about to go down. It's really scary. Yep, tanks have gone down, science missile has gone down. And now Jiraiya is gonna move in here. Just completely free. Just kill off all the drones. Natural has gone down as well. Can't just hear and save. Vulture trying to save Target, but no. Target kind of lives up to his name in this uh, game, just being target of all the aggression. And uh, Marine Medic just not strong enough against Protoss. I mean, I'm assuming this is over. <laughs> this is looking so dire. And uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, there's still this one base, but it's only protected by two Lone Seas tanks, so that's gonna be it. GG, as we call it. That's gonna be it. So, two to one in favor of uh, EMG. I, uh, as I said, I did kind of expect them to do better, but oh, I, I did expect uh, actually X17 to to be pretty good. Oh, eh, happy surprise here.
Alright. Next match, and uh, possibly the decider. It's gonna be... Let's see... Is it Ed Red versus Najon on uh, Tau Cross? So Tau Cross is an old school map. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Alright. So up here, in the left, we have Najon representing X17. Match point, he needs to win this to take it to an ace match. And then Ed Red here from EMG on the right. It's a Protoss. This is Tau Cross. Let's see. I have this tiny choke. This can be blocked by a pylon or a supply depot. Super annoying. Pretty small choke in here. And then there's some high ground here that you can actually abuse with tanks. Vulture. No, not vultures. Uh, dragoons and high templars. Are really good up here. And there's uh, another third out here. So Terran can take three bases pretty easily and then there are these bridges. But yeah, it, it's a very open map to play and, and I think most Terrans don't like it. So, <laughs> uh, well, we'll see, but uh, you can definitely abuse the map pretty well. Uh, we'll see how this Terran approaches it. He's gonna build his first supply depot here. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you can just build like a uh, a barracks up in the choke and it'll be kind of fine. Uh, it'll be like a semi block and that, that's usually enough against Protoss. Ooh, he's just building a lot of probes and no gateway. Well, that usually means like a, a 14 or 13 nexus. A bit of cheese here. And while the Terran is doing this was uh, almost the same. This almost looks like uh, the 10-10-10 build from, from Terran. Just uh, building uh, the barracks and, and uh, the refinery very close to each other in proximity. Yeah, this uh, this right here, Marines can run through and Salads cannot, so this is a pretty safe build. And you can see everything is just tucked nicely together, so... You know, assuming he built his factory like here, everything's just really defensible, and uh, here we go. Uh, the Nexus has gone down. So I think uh, no, the normal one procedure is just get a gas and then... Yeah, Terran unfortunately scouted the wrong location first. This means that he's not going to see this in time. Like, uh, he could probably still pull some uh, some SCVs. I, I, I've seen a lot of Terran players pull like a, a bunch of SCVs and, and send in a, a Vulture or two. And then just build a bunker, basically do a bunker rush. And that can work. Uh, and you don't need to do it too early either, but it's kind of all in. And uh, it's very uncomfortable. Gateway has finished. And yeah, this total is working out very well. Simon is core going down. Now, how does Terran actually respond to this? You know, he can take a, a very early expansion himself, but, you know, it's going to be way later still, like, compared to this. Being transferred. A single cell is being built to, to support it. And here goes the factory. You know, he could send a, a vulture to be very. Uh, to pressure it very early on and then just uh, do an expansion himself. But, uh, no, he might just be pulling SCVs and going for the, the kill uh, onto the, this natural. I think he is. He could also start building a bunker out here. <coughs> but yeah, here we go. This is what I was talking about. And uh, the Protoss seizes as well, so he might have to pull probes himself. It's going to be very beneficial that he knows it's coming for sure. But uh, I'm not sure like if Protoss can really do against this, except just have good micro. So, so we'll see. This SCV is going to be the first guy on the scene. He could start building a bunker. Uh, going to move back. Yeah, so Marines are not quite there yet. They're, they're not as fast. There's a lot of SCVs. And here it goes, the bunker being built. This cell has not yet responded. There is a, a Dragoon out now at this point, and there is a Vulture joining the fray as well. So, this is uh, almost impossible actually to stop for the Protoss. And now it's just a matter of can he uh, finish range in time and start just outrating the bunker? 
because now he's just gonna start focusing down because I think that's just gonna send this as either way. Alright. Uh, yeah, there's no range yet. So I think this is going down. Terran at home. He's not mining gas, so I think he's looking to expand behind this. <laughs> he's just completely not mining gas. But yeah, Nexus has gone down. So so well punished here by the Terran. Takes it down immediately. And looks like he's going to expand. Probably. Yeah, he, he doesn't have gas to build a tank <laughs> or research anything. He just he pulled all his workers from the gas. Uh, as soon as range uh, finishes, we can just. Uh, th this bunker can get outranged. And that's going to be that. Uh, it, uh, he actually built a lot of vultures. And the, just the fact that he doesn't have mines, that's going to be really really problematic for the Terran here, because if you can just place a bunch of mines out here, like, that would be scary. And Yoda's moving back here, afraid of these uh, vultures, I don't know why. Vultures die really heavily to Dragoons. There we go. Finally shooting at it. Oh, these vultures, they're moving forward. Uh, very scary. Yeah, gets taken down, and at this point I think Protoss should just do a counter-attack. Looks like he's on... VK here, so pretty aggressive uh, follow-up actually, and he will expand as well. And uh, yeah, the lack of gas for Terran right now is so annoying, right? Like, imagine if there had been mines out here, it would just be completely shutting down this push, but you no, know, as it is, these vultures, they're gonna really struggle to actually fight this off. Now, there is another bunker here, but uh, Dragoons, they still outrange it, and there's only one Marine in it. So he could even just run by it and he would take like a bit of shield damage on one guy. He's gonna bring out a bunch of SVs to block it. That's good play. And there's a, a tank here as well. Oh man, this is scary. Mine's just finished. Uh, yeah, a pretty nice mine dragon. Oh, this tank is on 25 HP. But yeah, you can see this bongo is just not doing any damage right now. And there's uh, one dragoon. One dragoon takes one for the team. Now this expansion is under a lot of pressure. And there should be three game pressure coming out to, to greet it as well. Oh no, this tank getting focused down so heavily. And the sea smoke is just miles away and there's on no no mines either. And, and this could be it. So it went from one guy rushing another to the other guy just, just finishing it off and crushing it. Take down the machine shop as well. That's gonna mean this is the last tank, and there will be no siege mode. Now, SMEs, they're, they're really good against the runes, actually. <laughs> they take uh, 10 damage, I believe, from the enemy to be shot. Because the runes do explosive damage, and the are small. You know, these are little Gundam, so they are pushing them out, them out but like I said that was the last, last tank. So if we can just push these uh, runes back, we could actually hold this. And we are actually holding it. He is doing it really well. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Dragoon has not even been rallied, so... Oh, I think he miss, miss hotkey to uh, gateway as well. He killed a lot of SCVs though. Yeah, look at the supplies. 28 supplies in there. And oh, this tank! This tank! 11 HP survives once again. Actually, takes down another one, but... Oh, the tank going down. Oh no, the tank, the hero, the goon, finally goes down, but another three Dragoons come in, and these are really scary. You know, I want to see the Bezu Micro, but that's probably not going to happen. We even have a Reaver drop coming in. Oh, I think he was trying to do it. No, he's just going <laughs> to... This is how you do anti-mind Micro. Oh, and this expansion is getting uh, shut down again. Starport? Okay. That's not how you fight off that <laughs> pressure. Uh, but I guess he's thinking ahead. And it's still just uh, vultures and, and mines. I don't think there's an observer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, he miss uh, hotkey this. But he's only producing out two days when you think three. So that's unfortunate. But yeah. Edred, he's about to win it for EMG here. This uh looking dire and oh my god this is the slowest siege mode ever 
And I think there's a, even a third about to come out here from Edred. Is it Edred or Edred? Who knows? I'm just, I've been calling him e e Red, Edred. Gotta stick to it. Yeah. I don't see an observatory yet. So it might just be the reborn. Yep. I'm just gonna keep on rewriting. And there's no tank. Okay, there is one tank. But uh, that's it. This Reavers is having a field day. Currently, Najon is just not mining. Oh no! So many SMEs! Oh, this is so nasty. Once again, I think this is gonna be it. Oh, he actually goes down. And these two goons gonna move forward. Uh, the nation he calls it a day. And that's gonna be it. X17 will lose their second one and EMG will win their second one. So EMG looking real good. And uh, you know, congratulations to you guys. You, you played real well. There was <laughs> some very weird games. Uh, some strategies I have never seen before and uh, some, some nice mess ups and some nice standard play as well. So uh, yeah, I casted this because I wanted to, because uh, I like StarCraft, I want to cast some more of it. I really like uh, analyzing games. And, uh, you know, I also feel like I might uh, recognize some old buddies that I played with back in the day. You never know. But uh, either way, I, I had fun. Uh, this was Peter casting uh, the, the Pan America Team League. And uh, team games are just always fun, right? I got to cast some 2v2. That was my whole goal, basically. I, I, because I love 2v2. But yeah, let me know if you want more of this or if I, want, I should crawl back into the hellhole that I originally spawned from. Yeah, have a good day.